Hi, I'm Ernie Bauer, and this is Mike Green. We're from CSIS. I'm the senior advisor for Southeast Asia, and Mike is the chair of the Japan program here. We just got back from uh, Hawaii, where we did a trilateral in Maui with the United States, Japan, and, and Southeast Asia. Mike, I thought the uh, we came out with some really interesting uh, findings after talking with the, the Japanese and the Southeast Asians. What, uh, what did you take away? Well, this uh this trilogue or trilateral dialogue, Japan, China, excuse me, Japan, the U.S., and key Southeast Asian countries, right. is, uh, for, is part of a series we're doing with U.S., Japan, India. Um, Charles Freeman's doing China, India, U.S. And as Asia um, uh, gropes and tries to find a regional architecture, a mix of institutions and forums that will reinforce peace and economic interdependence, it's obvious there are a lot of fissures right. and a lot of, and it's hard to mix and match. And so increasingly, these multilateral groupings are yielding areas of common interest and sort of s setting a, a path ahead for the rest of the region. And I thought there were a couple of areas where when the US, ASEAN, and Japan sat down together, those kinds of um, visions for the whole region came out. Um, uh, one of them that was quite clear, I thought, was how much the uh, Southeast Asians were willing to articulate in that meeting and also in this uh, statement we put out that they really rely on the US forward presence and the US-Japan alliance. It's yeah. something they new but rarely articulated before and I think it reflects some uncertainty about China as, yeah. as you know. I mean what I what I took away that, that just blew me away was mm -hmm. the that twenty years ago when we all sat at the table and the ASEANs came in and they were looking for balance then, the issue was Japan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that the Japan Japanese were uh, had plans to develop the region and were dominating competition and the Americans weren't there and, and mm -hmm. please get engaged. And now 20 years later, I was struck by the, the, the fact that everybody at that trilateral agreed that Japan would be a stronger ally of the United States through deeper engagement in yep. Southeast Asia and also vice versa. Yep. The United States would be a, a stronger partner for the Japanese. Yeah, I mean, the ASEANs are actually pretty smart about this. They want their Americans, they want their Japanese, they want their Chinese, but they don't want too much of any one of us. And on the security front, they're most comfortable with us, it's quite clear. Um, but it was also obvious that they want us and Japan to keep investing, both in terms of time and money, uh, in the economic relationship with Southeast Asia. The other thing that came out um, uh, for me was um, how much uh, you know, the Obama administration's had some success in the region with its uh, engagement in Southeast Asia, um, but a lot of questions about whether that's sustainable. Right. And the useful thing about a trialogue is that the Japanese then can weigh in and say to Americans, you know, we need you there too. Right. And, and, and uh, we, it picks up everybody's game yeah. uh, in the region. I thought the, uh, another interesting element of discussion was Burma. Mm -hmm. um, that it, it's clear to me that, you know, the Chinese behavior towards, or, or Chinese enablement of, uh, uh, or enabling the Burmese uh, and the North Koreans uh, really has an impact on their neighbors. Yep. And, you know, China, ASEAN's been carrying around the big black ball and chain that's Burma for the last decade. Well, the Chinese sort of take a free rider, you know, shot on this, and and it's clear that everybody wants to see change in Burma, and that I thought one of the great outcomes of this meeting was the a real, a real will by all partners to mm -hmm. take a look at what are the change levers of change in Burma, mm -hmm. how can we how can we look at those together, how can we encourage change, yeah. and, and maybe one of those ideas is to talk to the Chinese about you know, obviously the Chinese are feeling some reputational. Uh, impact of, mm -hmm. over their behavior in South in Asia over the last 18 months. Uh, I don't know whether you think anything we could. Well, that was an interesting part of the discussion. That the the, the, the uh, uh, beginning to look at what would bring change in Burma, right. and uh, I think that's a fruitful area for for further discussion because um, the region now seems to have the attitude a lot of countries, especially in ASEAN, that yeah. hey, they had elections, they were highly flawed, but let's see what happens next. But uh, I think from a U.S. perspective, or, 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 or perhaps Europe, Australia, and Japan to some extent, the facts on the ground haven't changed, right. and we just don't know. Um, so it's worth, as we assess, thinking through together what would constitute change, what would the agents of change be, so that next time we talk about what we're going to do about Burma, we have some metric we can agree on. Right. Um, and uh, I think that was an interesting discussion. I think it reflected how, um, for, for, a lot, for a lot of ASEAN, um, yeah, th despite the non-interference in internal affairs line, there is more and more attention to good governance, rule of law, and all these issues, which, yeah. which they have in common with Japan as well. Yeah. 
How about uh, on trade? Um, clearly, the Japanese are keen on getting in the TPP game. Yeah. Can they do that politically, though? Probably. Probably, uh, which is amazing considering how weak the prime minister is. He has 20-some percent support, and agricultural interests in Japan have always been very powerful. But, um, but TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which began in ASEAN, really, yeah. right? It was New Zealand, Singapore, Singapore Chile, Brunei, um, uh, is really becoming where the action is. And the U.S. is negotiating, and uh, Vietnam, Australia are coming in. The Japanese government wants in. Japanese media un almost unanimously wants in. Um, will Khan be powerful enough to overcome the vested interests that don't want reform? Probably, actually. Yeah. And, uh, and it shows you how important ASEAN is as, a, uh, as, a, as, a, as an event driver <laughs> yeah. uh, in Asia still, despite the difficulties they're having uh, as an association. Well, as you can tell, we had some really interesting discussions out in Maui, and I think, um, I hope you share this view. Yeah. I think we, sh we should continue this trilateral and, and look for others, too. Yeah, these, uh, these mini-lateral discussions, and we do a lot of them here at CSIS, um, are the building blocks of what hopefully will be a more inclusive, open, and uh, functionally uh, effective multilateral diplomacy in Asia, and not just a lot of talk shops. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully we contributed to that. Thanks for joining us at CSIS.